Hello and welcome to Astro Mechanics. This is Christopher Watecki reporting on behalf of Human Garage. Sorry, we had some issues there. We finally are able to go live. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining us. I just decided to reboot the phone. That was my solution. It looks like it's worked. <clears throat> so we're having some issues staying connected there. Welcome everyone. If you're in the chat, <clears throat> tell us where you're, where you're coming in from. Like, where are you in the world? What is your sun sign and its number, its step number? What is your rising sign and its step number? And what is your moon sign and its step number? So sun, rise, rising, and moon. And I'll be bringing up three people. Yes, third is a lucky charm. Thank you very much, Colleen. I'll be bringing up three people actually to talk about what's going on in your life. So if you have a particular issue or something that's holding you up, I would love to talk to you and take a look at your chart in my third mind's eye and help you out with whatever is going on. Pleasure to see everyone. Oh, Sydney, Australia, how wonderful. We are in the middle of some massive energy, folks. Like you might feel a lot of triggers, a lot of issues because we had an eclipse on Monday, first of all, a lunar eclipse. That lunar eclipse was a doozy. I was super grouchy. My mind wasn't very sharp. Um, I've just some sleep issues, just really feeling run over by a truck is the way I feel. I felt like back when I was in my twenties and I used to party. That's what I felt like. I felt hungover. I felt a lunar eclipse hangover. It was a full moon lunar eclipse at five degrees Libra opposing the sun in Aries. I think because it's in Aries, it's also a bit more jolting. So energetically we were jolted. And the jolt was to karate chop and stop thinking a certain way about yourself. Hi, Ruby Jean. Thanks, everyone. 14 Libra, Joey. Yes, tell everyone your sun sign and step number, your rising sign and step number, and your moon sign and step number. Yeah, it's been very heavy. And, uh, and everyone, I just had a staff meeting with another production that I'm on, and everyone there was like, we're all on camera, and none of us really, it seemed like none of us felt like being on camera. Um, we were just kind of having to push it or whatnot. And that's because what's really happening here is a death. I mean, a lunar eclipse is a death. It's the death of an old way of thinking about yourself, an old way of relating to yourself. That's what's ultimately passing away. And now that's being reborn. Now, this was a step five rebirth, which means it was an attitude adjustment the universe gave us, like to think differently um, about ourselves and therefore treat ourselves differently because we think differently about ourselves. And this is the last mile, if you will, of our transition out of our karma with ourself. We just spent the last whole year with Saturn in Pisces from March of last year to March of this year, clearing out karma we have with ourself. Karma, by the way, are the things you're holding on to, your grudges, your pet peeves, your past life traumas that still freak you out when you start to, you know, you bring up that topic. For instance, if you're born with a fear of drowning, that's karma. Being born with a fear of drowning is karma. You have drowned before or you have known someone who's drowned. And so you have these issues where you avoid all swimming, bathing suits, water slides, all of it because of this past life karma. So <clears throat> what this ultimately did, this eclipse was really pulled the rug out from our karma with ourself and said to ourselves, okay, it's time to think differently about ourself and therefore treat ourselves differently. So to use my fear of swimming, it means, okay, that means you no longer uh, avoid water. You no longer avoid uh, getting in a swimsuit, you know, all these types of things. So we're in the week right now. This week I'm calling Forging a New Mego. What you're basically doing this week is you're training yourself to treat yourself differently according to having uh, faced these fears, faced these traumas, etc. We all have these bad habits with ourselves. Sometimes it's us consuming food or alcohol or substances. Sometimes it's that we escape in work. Sometimes it's that we pick fights with other people. You know, we all have these habits with ourselves that are a result of our trauma. And the universe is saying it's time to kind of vacuum out that trauma now and treat yourself as if that trauma didn't exist. So in very simple layman's terms, pretend like nothing ever happened your whole life. <laughs> Go ahead and give yourself a pardon for all of your whole life. Give yourself a second full clean slate chance and treat yourself, um, treat yourself as if there is no problem in essence and go from there and see what comes up, see what works, what doesn't work um, and sort of finagle it. What's going to happen is as we go through this week, we're basically releasing self-limitation. So you're going to realize that you have been the one holding yourself back, um, that you've been the one that has 
uh, ultimately been the problem. And so as a result, you might realize you want to run for office. You might realize you want to uh, try to get your own job. You may, win, you may realize that you want to um, uh, do something on a larger scale than you've allowed yourself now that you're no longer being the one that holds yourself back. And then on Monday, we have Mercury Metrograde. Mercury Metrograde, where Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. It'll be retrograde for three solid weeks. So it goes retrograde from the 1st till the 25th, basically, where it'll station direct. And what that is, is once you realize you have this new me go with yourself, that you can make me go, that you're not going to be the one in the way of your own progress, that you're not going to be the one uh, who's who's tripping up you know, the uh, your abilities, then suddenly you can rethink everything. Like maybe I will, you know, sell the house and get something else. Maybe I will move to a warmer climate. Maybe I will go ahead and try try that side business. Maybe I will, you know, go out and try to meet the one. So the entire retrograde of April is really us rethinking. And the, my term for April is the grand I am. I feel that we're going to come into this grand I am statement of who we are in April. We're going to realize we are not what our parents told us were. We are not what society told us we were. We are not what our first wife or first husband told us we were. We are far grander. I am all that I am. It's this major grand statement of really coming into our power. And I have another show that I'm on with a bunch of psychics and mystics. And we all agree that something's going down in the month of April as far as a major power shift. And I think part of that is that people are going to stand up and no longer tolerate certain things. So uh, God help if they try to pull off anything funky this month because we the people are ready to stand up. Now, so just to give you sort of a, you know, this is, we're putting the movement into motion. We all have a movement. We all have a cause. We all have something that we want to see changed on the planet. And so part of April is going to be that as well, that people begin to plan the movement then we have a solar eclipse on April 8th, two weeks from last Monday. And that solar eclipse um, is going to ultimately give us this boost of healing energy because the sun, the moon, and Chiron all conjoin at the same, uh, at the same degree and the same uh, minutes. And so that eclipse is actually a blast of healing energy. I think it will be the affirmation that you are healed. So a lot of people have been working, doing the fossil removers, maneuvers. You're going to realize that you your body has finally taken on all this investment. So I feel like you're going to have some real good results if you've been doing the maneuvers, probably around the eclipse. And I also feel that blast of healing energy is going to end up knocking down people who are sick. So if you have people who are very sick, who are on the edge, if their life is on the edge, they should probably start to go into some better self-treatment now and better self-care now because that's such a healing blast of energy. What tends to happen is who people are on the edge tend to fall over and to sort of push to someone who's over on the edge. So it's going to be a powerful and somewhat dangerous eclipse. I think geologically it's going to be dangerous because of the gravitational pull and Chiron involved in it. Um, so, you know, just sort of prepare, not for the worst, but uh, just flashlights, that sort of thing, because we don't know. It's one of those eclipses. Now, what I find fascinating is that you're seeing the media and the government putting out warnings about this eclipse. And that is a first in my life. I've never seen that in my entire life. A lot of my staff feels like that's fear mongering. Um, some other people in my staff feel like it's just preparation because there's millions of people flocking to the same part of the country here in the United States. But I'll tell you, astrologically, it's going to be a doozy. And what you want to do is really have your karma with yourself set up. You want to know what the grand I am is. What is the statement of who you are becoming? And then that eclipse is just going to push you uh, faster if you're set up that way. The last major date of this month is April 20th, where we have Jupiter and Uranus conjoining together on April 20th. That is like a kind of like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a quasar type of energy. It's sort of like a, a giant, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not quasar, but like a pulsar. I can't remember the name of the, the, where the star explodes, but that energy of Uranus and Jupiter coming together is sort of infinite possibilities vertically, which is Uranus in higher dimensions, and infinite possibilities horizontally, which is Jupiter in Taurus. So on the 20th, we get a big boost uh, of energy that sort of multiplies 
whatever you are doing. It sort of pushes you on the swing even harder. And just to flip ahead, May 7th, new moon pushes you really hard at 18 degrees. May 18th, the day of the Unite the Light, where I'll be working with Gary at a function in Austin, Texas, the Sun and Jupiter uh, conjoined for an even bigger multiplication. So basically, what I'm boiling this down to is astrologically, it's time to get your shift in order. It's time to get right with yourself. It's time to then next week start to look at getting right with all the people in your life because the energy is going to really push whatever you have into play really hard uh, as of April. And as of May, things are really launching up. And then Jupiter goes into Gemini in late May. And at that point, I think there's a lot of crazy intellectual activity. I think things are bouncing off the walls. And I am I'm saying that we're going to have what I call a summer of love. So for those who are light workers, for those who are people who are working in their heart, who want to make the earth a better place, this is your time, friend. You are being called to the stage. If you haven't noticed, the world is falling apart. It's not that we're going to keep it from falling apart. It's that we're going to build the new the new era, the new world, the new systems as fast as the old systems are collapsing. So don't try to rescue the old systems. Get your idea, your dreams, your mission in motion. And if you didn't hear the memo, you want to have it in motion by uh, April 8th, the solar eclipse on April 8th. That's ultimately what it is. Now, you're also going to find there's a lot of switching. So the last thing I want to say, and I'll bring some people up on the screen. If people want to come up on the screen and talk about with me what you are facing this year and maybe what the eclipse has been like, I would love to have you. So stand by. I'll be taking three people up here. Um, sorry you're crying. Where There's a lot of release going on. Um, one of the last things I want to bring up is dying relationships. We have come to the expiration of many relationships. What I mean by that is that... <clears throat> A lot of times we're in a relationship because they bring out our worst. A lot of times we're in a relationship because they, um, they are meant to help us as a teaching tool for us to realize where we are flawed and where we can heal. And even when we are sometimes abused by other people, it's because we were abused in past lives and we never were able to cope with that abuse. So uh, this month, as you stand into the grand I am and you mobilize your movement, you may realize that many relationships have come to an end, that they've come to a close. So I do feel that we're going to be drifting away from certain groups, certain geographical regions, certain associations. And that drifting starts this month and will probably come to a full close in May once the Earth is in Scorpio. When the Earth is in Scorpio, we'll be making final cuts. So if you know someone in your life is not going to make the cut, so to speak, I would probably wait until May 1st to tell them, uh, but, I would, uh, but I would recognize and start drifting away now. So I think that's going to happen. We're going to have a lot of, in the same sense too, a lot of new people are coming. And I'll actually take this moment to pitch our events going on in Austin, Texas. Human Garage has an event on the 12th. We have an event on the 18th. We'd love to have you in Austin, Texas. There's more details on the Human Garage site for that side of it. I will be speaking at the Human Garage uh, event in Austin, Texas. It'll be fun. I can't wait to meet my fellow garagers. But then we also will be having a special Unite the Light, which is more intellectual, more spiritual, a uh, calling for people who are do-gooders, who are here to make the world a better place. That will be on May 18th and 19th. And for tickets to that, it is unitethelight.love. Unitethelight.love. So I bring that up because I feel that we are going to be probably meeting a lot of new people. You're going to meet a lot of the new team. You're going to come up with a lot of alliances, I think, with other people. And that is starting to happen in April, too. So April is like a big kind of, kind of square dance hoedown where we are bowing to our partner, saying goodbye, and then saying hello to the new dance partner. So there's a lot of moving around, a lot of dancing as far as people dancing in your life, people boogieing out of your life. And I would say... Just make sure you say to them the things your heart's always wanted to say. Have no regrets. Have no animosity. Have no strings. You want to cut yourself from that energy if something is ending. All right. Um, yeah, okay, gotcha. Robbie, Robbie is sharing that she has a friend too. So yeah, May 1st, I feel, is probably the right time. That's right after everyone is real clear on what their worth is around May 1st. And you'll be able to say to the person, I love you, but I have to, you know, I have other things to do in this life. 
Um, and so let's stay in loose touch, but I'm not going to be putting in the time and intention that I used to be. <clears throat> and, you know, some people will take it hard, but some people saw it coming the whole way, honestly. So, yeah, it's going to be the grand I am. That is April coming into your greatest self. So I would love to hear from you, my fellow garagers. Uh, if you'd like to come up on Astro Mechanics and talk about the mechanics of your chart, please know before you come on your sun sign and sun degree your rising sign and rising degree, and your moon sign and moon degree. And I will be happy to answer any questions you might have. I just let my fingers do the walking here. Um, and just, we'll go with the one who came in first in line. She should get credit. This person comes up. Um, okay. Oh, your granddaughter was born during the lunar eclipse. My goodness, that's intense. Rising is AC. That's correct. Hello, Hello. Mind Body Movement. How are you? What's your name? I'm Dominique. Hi. Dominique. I am one of the volunteer coaches from Human Garage. Oh, nice to meet you. What a pleasure. Hi, nice to meet you. I knew that I'm going to be online today. I, I don't know. I felt like going online today, and there you are, and there, there I am. <laughs> wow, good work. What's your sun sign and step number? So so I'm 21st Virgo, it's my sun, and then it's 29 degrees Libra, and my moon is 5 degrees Taurus. Oh, wow, okay. And, and what are you experiencing right now? Are you, are you having um, your karma stories changing? Are you having a, going through a metamorphosis, becoming a butterfly? Yeah, def definitely. I can definitely feel it. After, I was also the one uh, being in Cancun with the core team of garage and since then it's been like i would say a roller coaster but also you know everything i felt like i'm in the middle of a tornado inside and like everything is around me like this and i was just like okay what's happening here and now since the full one actually i feel more and more coming really to like to the full new me and then there was this, like the last two, three days, there was fear coming up, but I didn't feel attached anymore. Oh, good. Um, and I decided, like, I knew that I just need to shift my story. And since I decided it, because in the body, fear and um, excitement is the same emotion in the body. So I just decided, no, it's excitement. And since I really said it out loud, I'm so much, I uh, just, I'm really excited. And when you said about like the different dates, I just said today to one of my friends, I feel like something really big is going to happen for all of us. Oh, like, you do? Yeah. So not in a sense of something bad, just something like I just feel this big excitement. Um, yeah. yeah. And But one of, my, one of my things that I still think there's a big learning point is my relationship with money okay. and okay and there for me recently comes up a lot of this masculine energy that i feel like i want to renew so yeah i don't i don't know, really know where this is going to but uh, yeah i don't know Interesting. Do you happen to know like what your Chiron is by chance in your chart? Um, Do you have that handy? Is it in Taurus? Chiron I guess it was. Is. I'm not sure what degree, but I, I believe it was Gem Gemini. You have Chiron in Gemini? Okay. Well that would be that would be um wounds around your voice and owning your voice and owning your intellect. You have issues with that? Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um it's always like I want I I'm happy to be online for example I love to be in lives or do an own life or you know be a teacher be a coach and all that but as soon as someone is putting me on the spot I'm like ah, I'm gonna go yeah you know? okay got you well and actually so I'll tell you this I mean I think you're gonna grow out of um, a lot of that starting this summer when Jupiter goes into Gemini you'll have your first opportunity to rise um, to a higher level and come out of it. I wonder, you don't know what degree your Gemma, your Chiron is by chance? No, you don't have it handy? I can't remember. I was looking it up in Cancun, but I can't remember. Laura, you can remember my Gemini, my okay. degree, because she's in my, because she was in my group, but I can't remember it now, I'm sorry.
for internet stuff here. I think the uh, uh, the Mercury retrograde is already starting to hit in there. Well, you know, ultimately, just looking at your astrology right now, it looks like there's um, there's a lot of relationship development for you right now. Have you noticed any changes in relationships? Because that's where a lot of the stress is in your is in your uh, chart is to expand relationships to others. That's also as a Libra rising in particular that that's important, and as a Virgo, both. You're shaking your head. Yes. Um, how is that affecting you? So I was with my now ex. Well, we are not together anymore the year, more or less, but we're still very close. So we feel very connected and we have a lot of love for each other. But we also said we kind of cut the cord together. We said, okay, we need to move on. We need to let go. So that happened just a week ago or something like this. And I feel I was like in a kind of, I will say, I was a bit of a loner. Ah, uh, yeah, it's eight degrees here, she says. Oh, eight, eight degrees. degrees. Okay, thank you, yeah. Consciously Healing Laura. Thank you. <laughs> eight degrees. Laura. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. That would be actually an issue of making commitments or decisions. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, a hard time. time. And that might be due to your feelings. But you were saying, you were saying about relationships, that you are... Um, yeah. How, when did so you, when so did I wasn't... Break, about, I, I would not say right. loner, but, you know, I... I, I I don't know, there was so much going on, like growing and all that and shifting that I didn't feel like I had the right people around me. Mm -hmm. But with, with mm -hmm. Garage, that changed a lot. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah, and I feel like I can also talk openly. I can be and say my truth. Just here, I moved to Portugal three years ago and I didn't quite feel like I found my people and but now it's interesting I feel like going out more and more like not going on party but you know going out there and like meeting people and being more open so I had yesterday I hosted a dinner in my place and I loved that and uh, started doing it again oh yeah. good so things have to find yourself being more social got you yeah and connecting what about connecting to your heart are you feeling that yes yeah, this is a big topic, especially with um, the one that I'm teaching with, with Rhonda. This is really our topic, always coming to the to the heart. Yeah. Not so much thinking here, but coming back to the heart. What does the heart feel? Yeah, I think that's the key for you. With, with the 29 degree Libra rising, um, I think coming, you know, you are doing a lot of heartfelt development. And this is a big, I mean, I think that's probably the epicenter of most of your change. Maybe even with your trouble making decisions, if you're just more in the habit of asking your heart what your heart wants and basing your decision on what your heart wants, I think that's mm -hmm. probably the, a real strong suit for you um, going yes. forward. And and so that will probably lead. When was your breakup? If you don't mind me asking, when was it? When? Yeah, it when. was last last year in June. Okay, so you're actually running a little ahead of the clock there. Yeah. Because I think Virgos are, you know, really going to be finding the love of their life um, here probably in the next year or so. I think Jupiter and Gemini probably is going to be what we're waiting on for you to sort of grow out of having not being able to make the right decisions for yourself. And I think the magic of making the right decision for yourself is just to let your heart have that own those keys. I know Virgo wants to overanalyze and process and look at all the data. Okay. But at the end of the day, you pretty much close your eyes and you point to what you love. You know, so yes. adopting I, that. I really feel that more and more and more. Like, it's, especially with the maneuvers, you, it's it feels like it's such a good, good tool to always come back to your body and to really, really ask your heart, what, what, what do you want, heart? Like, what is it? And yeah, yeah I think that's the way to live the highest. And the maneuvers are amazing because if your body is full of stress, emotional toxins, anything like that. It's hard to get a clear read on your heart. So I think that the two go really well together, the maneuvers and also the conscious growth. Yeah. Because if your body doesn't change, you're just going to snap back right back into where you were. Yeah. yeah. And I think if this, was my, this was me in the past, like thinking here. And that's yeah. why why I ended up, you know, having anxiety and all that. That's, that's what I believe. Staying in your mind. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, we're calling the month of April the grand I am. So it, I'm putting on the spot, but if there was a, a new I am statement, what do you feel like you are becoming? What is the new I am for you? I am what? 
<laughs> there are two, two words popping in my head. And then I would say, I am joy and um, I am inspiration. Oh, I love that. And where, where are you, by the way, in the, in the world? I am in Portugal, in Villanova de Milfuntes. It's like two hours south from Lisbon oh, wow. on the coast. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Well, I'd yeah. say Portugal could use some inspiration and joy. <laughs> so, go, <laughs> so go for it. I hope we can meet someday um, yes. and connect. I like your energy. It's phenomenal. Good luck with you. Thank um, you. Just listen to your heart because I feel like true, my psychic awareness is there is true love coming. And it feels, uh, psychically, it feels like in June or July. Do you have a trip planned in July? Uh, no, but before in, uh, to Scotland, but this is end May. But oh, you know, you never know. <laughs> Maybe yeah. I am somewhere in July. Well, Who knows? Let me tell you this: if you get an if you get an offer out of the blue, really consider it. Okay, I will. It, it feels like you're not at home when you meet this person. Mm. It feels like you're on a. It does feel a little spontaneous, so it might just be like a weekend thing. Something, you know, light, like not something big around the world. But my guides are telling you to say yes to that trip. You'll get a feeling that you should go. In fact, your Virgo mind will be like, this doesn't make sense. That doesn't matter. If your heart wants to, go. Okay. Okay. okay Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Come back again, Dominique. Nice we'll to meet you. Again sometime. Thank All right. You. Terrific. We'll bring somebody else up on the camera here. Just go ahead and X out in the upper right corner. I'm just going to go down the, the stream here and try here we go i'm feeling aaron i'm feeling aaron aaron i'm feeling you, you come on down you're the next contestant on astro mechanics do 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 hi how's it going hi nice to meet you you too what, what is your sun sign your rising sign your moon sign your stats uh, so my sun side is 27 scorpio Ooh. my moon is six sag Oh, and my okay. rising sign is a little undecided. Um, technically, by my birth time, it's twenty nine Libra, like Dominique. Oh but wow! Every message from Serious Joy that I've gotten since last summer when I joined has said like you're an artist, you're creative, you're artistic, and I haven't felt that way. So I changed my birth time by one minute because it was twenty nine degrees and fifty nine minutes, and then it was zero Scorpio. Hmm. So you're not, so, you know, 29 Libra, you know, there's two, there's two, what's the word, interpretations of, of Libra. There is um, being able to relate to a piece of work like art. So having this phenomenal relationship to music or to art or to sculpting or whatever, or it's relationships to others. Do you feel like you push the envelope um, when it comes to relationships with others? No. Like okay. all of my wounds are in my seventh and 11th house. Like all of my bed. Oh, all your stuff. Yeah. Huh? So you feel more like a zero degree Scorpio. I think so. Are you closed off by nature just by default, like default closed? Yeah. I, can, I come, I open when, when I trust people, but it takes a while to let that in. So. I, okay. Yeah. Those were on the cusp. And let me tell you, like when it comes to astrology software, we'll use this as a teaching moment. Um, our, our software uses google maps other softwares don't use google maps they use older atlases so you can literally put in your the street address of your hospital and it might actually make your rising zero scorpio because you can go 20 minutes in the city and your rising sign will change a degree i did that it actually still left it at 29 but oh, it did hmm and do you get zero when you run it on other software platforms no, I found out the zero accidentally. Like when I was doing another platform, they didn't have my location. So I put like the nearest other city and then it said zero. I was like, oh, zero. Like I might like that. Okay, fair enough. Well, <laughs> zero and it's still very close to most things except that, that, that root intention. So your root intention would be to protect yourself. <laughs> yeah. As your dog comes over your shoulder. <laughs> so what's going on for you in this karmic period of life? Um, um, the lunar eclipse was pretty intense. Okay. I was like, I was super irritated. I am actually going to, I'm in California and I'm going to Ohio to see the eclipse. And my mom is begging me not to, she thinks something bad is going to happen. In Ohio, huh? Not yeah. really in Ohio. Just, she thinks it's going to happen along that fault line along the Mississippi river. And Ohio is a little away from there, but she just wants me to stay home. Mm. But I think she's, Interesting. um, I think she's 
feeling that you know like she's still going to be on earth two and i'm going to earth three and so i think okay. she's going to try to hang on and keep struggle me close in that way yeah yeah and so how do you for our for our watchers how do you uh resolve that sort of moment do you listen to your gut and know it's going to be okay do your does your mind logic logic it out how do you usually process something like that i listen to my intuition mm -hmm. i just kind of i feel it and you know, like, I, I don't feel any sort of fear about this at all. I just felt annoyed when she tried to hold me back. Gotcha. And then I also, so I was telling one of my friends too, is I got my two little kids traveling with me and my husband will be out of the country. And so if something were to happen, I'd actually, my sister's in Ohio. So I'd actually rather be with my sister and my brother and family than and on my own. And have the kids with you. Yeah. 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 I was super annoyed too, uh, on the eclipse. It was very, it was super annoying energy. Um, so I, I feel you. And for Scorpios, it was sort of hitting them in, in the inner child and in the heart. So what have you, have you been clearing karma the last couple of months? Yeah. A ton. Mm -hmm. And how would, and how would you, what would you like to share? That's, you know, you're a Scorpio that's going to be rising. So not much, but what is, <laughs> What's not uh, redacted in your in your report? <laughs> um, yeah, just doing the forty days of past lives and karma, and it just it really all does come down to self love. And you know, you keep saying it's not about getting a manicure and a pedicure and you know things like that. And it's finally actually really hitting home. Like, you know, just ask your heart first, like what is what do I want? And, that, and that's just been a, a huge change, and just let whatever flows flows and have you found that normally your mind overrides your heart or yeah maybe your ego yeah. wanting things mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I mean i my job as an engineer i convinced myself a long time ago that i wasn't artistic that i wasn't intuitive that all the things i used to think i saw and think i knew were wrong and so i'm sort of coming back now to just sort of trusting myself trusting my feelings playing psychic 101 every day and getting them oh, right when i get out of my mind when i'm not trying to think like well what do i know about sensei christopher that can make me answer this question differently instead of just what my gut says maybe you do have a 29 degree libra rising <laughs> <laughs> maybe you've just stifled the artist maybe you've, you've denied it um were you told to grow up i mean being an engineer were you pushed to do that as a child did someone in your family want you to have the logical choice mm -hmm. Both of my parents were in, like, my mom's an accountant. My dad was a financial planner and an actuary. So that was very much like, do you math? Math has a right answer. Math is the right way. Gotcha. It's hard to argue with math. Okay. Roger that. Well, I don't know. I'm, I say the money's out. I have a feeling that it's possible, Aaron, that you actually do have an arts. I, everyone is creative. Everyone is creative. You could be a creative liar. You could be creative at cheating. You could be creative, you know, at, you know, fudging the books. Like it comes out everywhere, but you might be sort of holding back on it. What would you say is the great I am for you? Is there a new I am statement that you are becoming in April or you seek to become? Um, I am unafraid. Ooh, that's a good one. Wow. So you spend a lot of your life being afraid. Yes. Okay. I, like, I didn't even want to call people because they might tell me no. And it, like, oh, wow. Like, even calling the library to ask their hours, like, I would not want to pick up the phone and talk to them because they might say no. Got you. And so, what would you do if they said no? I would somehow feel rejected. Like, it was a personal affront. Like, they were telling me they were close to me. Okay. And so, have you since rescripted that? Yeah. I mean, as, as a parent, I've had to stand up for my kids a lot. And mm -hmm. in doing that and realizing just kind of how easy it is, just ask for what you want, accept a no, just as it is. It's like, okay, no, the library is closed. Well, yeah, the library is closed. Okay. Right. And, you know, if I need something like bigger, just kind of stand up and fight for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, my, my personal belief is if the word is, if the answer is no, it's just not a right fit. If you, if it was, if you push the yes, overrode the no with a yes, you're going to end up with a situation that's not going to work um, or it's going to break, break apart or whatever. So forcing those yeses onto no's, um, if it's a no, I want to know it's a no. Because if you're not personally into it, I don't want to waste my time <clears throat> kind of thing. Maybe there's a lack. Do you happen to know your Chiron by chance? Ten Taurus. Oh, okay. Yeah, In my seventh house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So really, it's not about the no as an opportunity. It's about the person letting you down, I think is what it is there. So there's a self-worth issue around relationships is what that yeah. is. Yeah. Are, you in, are, are you in a relationship now? I'm married, yeah. Oh, oh good. Okay. Okay. I hope that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Usually. <laughs> Most of the time. Got mm -hmm. you. Well, I think you're over the hump with that, by the way. So with Jupiter having crossed your Chiron, I think you're going to find now, especially if you're coming from your heart, that you're going to, you know, a 10 degree Taurus Chiron would mean that somewhere you failed to protect your heart's interest in a past life. So you didn't protect what your heart wanted. You didn't speak up for your heart or you let someone take it from you or you didn't wait enough time for it to happen. You were impatient and you sort of jumped the gun. Uh, any of those possibilities. But uh, I think you're past that now, which is great. And you have a Libra rising at 29. That How crazy is that? This is how I experienced, by the way. Um, but you're saying zero Scorpio. I don't know. I, I feel... decided. Yeah, yeah. I think we should leave both open for the time being. Because um, usually astrology doesn't lie. You definitely... But I mean, you are a Scorpio, so it's easy to project Scorpio onto anything. Mm -hmm. Like if you... Of course, Scorpio would make sense because you are a Scorpio. Uh, and Libra may not. But we'll see. Um, ultimately, if it's a Libra rising, you are here to push relationships to a new level. With Chiron in the seventh, that does kind of point to pushing relationships to a new level. It's possible. But so, okay, I am fearless. Is there anything going on that I can help you with? No, I, I was mostly actually wanting to ask about my rising. It's, it's been bugging me. It doesn't change anything other than, you know, like the start of every house. So when we did the um, 40 Days of My Truth and Purpose, I was like on the step 27 when it was your sending. I was like, yeah, I've definitely like, I'm going to go zero Scorpio. And then like every house, I'm like, ooh, that changes what starts every single house. Like that was the only thing it changed. Even like I, mm -hmm. my Mars is a zero, but it stays, it stays zero even if I changed my rising. Mm -hmm. I mean, it stays in the, it stays in the 11th house. My Mars is zero Virgo. And so that zero didn't Virgo. change. Um, nothing else changed except who owns the house. Mm-hmm. Well, one would be you're coming across more as a zero than you are a 29 at the moment, um, which is that 29 is very, very responsive, like very, very um, kind of like very reactive, very responsive, having a hard time staying still. You're sort of like very calm and centered. So I would just keep experimenting with it. It's one of those things that's right on the cusp. You might go back and forth on and try some other softwares to see. Uh, I can see both in you. The fact that you've squashed your, your artistic side speaks to the 29, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, your current demeanor speaks to the zero. Here's a test. Do people project their stuff onto you? Yeah. What? Okay. That's, that's a zero then. Okay. So one of the classic things about a zero rising is it's like zero is like a mirror. So energy bounces back off of a zero, believe it or not, because it actually is closed, even though it looks like it's open. Mm -hmm. Um, so what happens is, is people will see themselves in other, in your behavior, but they will blame you for what they see. So it's zero degrees always get gaslit. They're always being accused of stuff the other person is doing. Uh, and that's one of the, the uh, side effects of a zero rising. So that makes possible. sense. I was yeah. accused of like, of cheating. I would like get up to sharpen my pencil in school and I'd be accused of cheating. Oh. Like, oh my god okay and it was crazy all right well then okay I, officially i'm going for zero then right. yeah it's one minute difference and who knows maybe the, the nurse got it wrong by a minute i mean the hospital clocks could have been wrong too you know totally. like, that, that's what i was told myself because it was just so close because it was 29 and 59 minutes on that rising if i do the 4 22 a.m and so i just i figured it was easy to you know even if you're 30 seconds in it probably changed when I was with my son and he was being born, um, I, I was watching the clock for the first breath. And it was at 9.33 and they go and they wash the baby and all this other stuff. And the nurse is like, birth time, 9.35. I was like, no, it's not. It was 9.33. And they're like, Jesus, okay. <laughs> like, nervous father. But like, my point is I witnessed them m make it off by two minutes. You know, so I, I think you have a justified case here. So right. that would mean that your son's in the first house then. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Either way, it's in the first house. Yeah. 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 So you're no BS. You, you are what we see is what we get. There's no hiding there. There's no facade. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, good luck in the great I am of being unafraid. I think that's beautiful. Great inspiration for everyone. Come back thank and talk you. to us and tell us how things are going, Aaron. All right. Well, nice thank you. To see you. you. Ciao for now. All right. So we're going to do one more to bring on camera here. And I just sort of going to go up and down and see what I feel. It's really, here we go. We're going to, I think I'm feeling Stella. My guides are calling to Stella. So let's see if Stella comes up. By the way, it's completely not democratic. It's all intuitive. I just pull it up. Hello, Stella. Hi. So nice, nice to, to finally you. join you. Yes. So oh, nice to meet you too. Oh. Yeah, you won the spiritual lottery. What's your sun sign and sub number? My sun sign is Libra, mm. 11 degrees. Ooh, integrity. All right. And you're rising? Virgo rising, 16 degrees. Oh, okay. Spiritual. And my and your moon? moon is 29 degrees Aquarius. Ooh, wow. Interesting. That's You're an interesting cat. What do you do yeah. with your time? Um, what do I not do? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm one of those uh one of those kind of people. I was born on the road to paradise in Washington State. So, wow. I, that's actually written on my birth certificate. Um, really? So, <laughs> my parents decided to have me at on in the Kennedy cabin on the road to paradise. Oh. Um, so that they could write that on the birth certificate and so when you start out that way it's kind of like yeah Both sort of like a pressure yeah and my dad is also or was uh 11 degrees libra too no no kidding do you feel <laughs> how's your relationship to him um he he and i were like so so close um i was his one of many children, but I was uh, his favorite, mm -hmm. which he mm -hmm. couldn't really hide. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then and other siblings kind of got in the way, little bits over the years. Um, and then our last, he passed away in 2018, and our last encounter was in about 2016. And um, I decided to share something very spiritual that I had experienced with him. And he said, he was a little bit like forgetful at that point in time. And he just said, he looked, he was listening to everybody else's things. And I thought, oh, okay, here's my moment. And he was a spiritual leader. So, um, yeah, me sharing this was like, oh, okay, here's my moment. He'll, he'll, you know, see that I see things too. And he just turned to me and said, leave it to them, to the leaders. You know, oh, and, wow. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to sit here and argue with an old man. <laughs> so I just kind of slowly backed away and slowly walked away after that. Um, since then, I feel such gratitude for that moment because I realized that that was the, the push that I needed. I would have probably stayed and been a follower instead of leading my own way. So. Um, well, you, your ego got a little like like hell you sort of re rebelled against your dad and he turned out to be a negative reinforcement to the direction you wanted to go basically yeah and because i because i loved him so much and like my mother something that i learned from her which was kind of to build the men up into uh. these godlike figures um i would have probably easily found myself doing that um mm -hmm. but when he said that it was just like there my, my soul was just like uh excuse me no <laughs> like i know what i experience right and nobody even my father can tell me you know otherwise or that i should listen outside of myself mm -hmm. um yeah so like sometimes the the most painful moment can know to be able to see the divine in it yeah that's actually wise on your part yeah and being an 11 libra you are a person who uh turns lemons into lemonade like a person who can transform something into finding the the, the silver lining finding the what the healing properties are of the experience no matter how hard it might be yeah. yes yes that's, yes 
Brilliant. Have you been feeling, have you felt yourself cut from an old karmic relationship to yourself in the last month to six weeks? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, I have, un I'm actually on serious joy and, oh, yeah. um, yeah, it's been wonderful. I didn't quite get on board right in time to do the 40 days of karma. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've been slowly taking it in and, uh, I find the messages that are coming through are so perfect. Um, oh, good. Yay. Because, yeah, because I, I feel like the old patterns were, I was always kind of, uh, yeah, I was really mean to myself oh. in the way I would speak to myself. And I often thought everybody else could do it better. I kind of, um, yeah, little comments that you hear and not being left-handed in a mostly right-handed world, all of these different things um, kind of fell on top of it. And I feel like it's now been the last bits of that uh, uncovering and just being like, wait a minute, no, I do know. And uh, yeah, Brilliant. definitely. It's come, it's I'm seeing more than just the light at the end of the tunnel. What do you do with your time right now? Are you working professionally? I am taking the, I'm doing the lifestyle artist one program. And, nice. um, and I work with Bach flower remedies. Uh, oh. I li I'm based in Turkey. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Hi. So hi. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And I speak, Turkish. Um, that's another actually very um, karmic something that's brought me here. Must um, be, yeah. <laughs> like Not very common in America. Yeah. I'm close to my Libra. I mean, my Venus Midheaven line. Oh, interesting. Okay, um, it's directly over Greece, I think, but close enough to Turkey to feel it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so I'm. I'm. What am I doing? I'm studying fashion maneuvers right now and teaching them in Turkish and seeing where in the process of making a website. I'm kind of actually, I noticed, I saw either, I can't remember if it was something that you mentioned or something, but I'm curious about, my Jupiter is in Gemini, zero oh, degrees. Oh, oh wow, okay. And I... I feel like the past few years, every year, I feel like, okay, something is, I've been putting in all these years. I did 16 years of social work as a midwife, delivering wow. babies at home, retired because I felt like I fulfilled that. I don't like blood either. Um, Oops. Sorry, uh, there we go. Yeah. And yeah. And so um, I'm just kind of, Looking, how can I say? Look, uh, I, I heard something about the Jupiter. I think it's going to be in at zero degrees. I'm curious. Uh, coming yeah. up, I think. Yep, Jupiter in late May. I don't have the exact date here with me. I think it was like the, the 26th or something. That's right. I'm not That's sure, all, yeah. but I think somebody. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and it's, so it's, I'm it's curious how that would. Re what you would have to say about that for me well jupiter and gemini means that you ultimately hold fortune when you begin to comprehend in your mind where your mental limits are mm -hmm. so your fortune is in recognizing your intellectual limits mm -hmm. so it could be that you have limited yourself and closed yourself down that you don't speak freely that you don't allow information to flow freely it could be that you're like your father and you don't hear things when they're said to you, like you don't let them in. So that's also a possibility. It could be that there are taboo subjects that you don't allow yourself to speak about and you've shut yourself down. So your fortune is when you change those limits mm -hmm. or maybe just that you uh, make them a conscious part of your exercise, that you're aware of where your intellectual limits are. And this particularly with yourself, by the way, Jupiter mm -hmm. zero is very much yourself. So maybe you don't let yourself think about certain things. 
maybe you don't let yourself allow you allow yourself to accept certain ideas mm -hmm. um and those might ideas might be about how great you are for instance maybe that you have talent and you're denying yourself of the talent mm -hmm. so when jupiter returns that's called a jupiter return on yeah. may 26th um it's going to provide for you the lessons basically you're going to see and understand intellectual boundaries with yourself differently you're going to realize mm -hmm. there's a different approach and honestly i feel that boundaries must be determined by feelings not thoughts mm -hmm. so the mind the mind doesn't know like how much should i pay 10 bucks 20 bucks 30 bucks how does the mind know mm -hmm. it's something that you feel mm -hmm. you feel that this is worthy or not worthy you feel where this the line is so the the key there i think is feeling mm -hmm. but it does mean it's a it's a fortune year because you've probably held yourself back considerably yeah. um, because of those mental boundaries. Mm -hmm. And honestly, with a father like that, that just shuts you down. My, my guess would be that your karma is that you hold your opinion to yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you could say that when you actually spoke up and shared with your father, you exercised your Jupiter at zero, you crossed mm -hmm. the boundary, you okay. spoke up. And mm -hmm. although it didn't return into the result you wanted from him and your relationship to him, uh, it did turn into your fortune. Uh, definitely. But, but yeah. by speaking up, it did lead to what you need to have happen. So what you could say is as of June, you know, give well, Jupiter be at zero and 26. So as of that moment, you definitely want to speak up. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I would say that's like the most mundane way to look at it. Like speak up, share your mind. If you're not sure if it's appropriate or not, ask your heart if this is something that your heart wants to share mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and ask your intuition if this is the time to share it so heart is yes intuition is is now the time mm -hmm. and those mm -hmm. are the two qualifiers i think that would protect you from saying too much mm -hmm. per se i feel like yeah i mean since i've been joined the human garage community definitely my limits for not say, speaking up have definitely kind of cleared the uh cleared the way um cuz yeah cuz i really i recognize that yeah if we can't, can't show up fully then what's the you know almost what's the point yeah t totally um yeah and you know what i would say i mean the quiet first of all we're we're coming into a time where we're going to have new people to you know come up and lead to start to lead and if you've always been known as the quiet one who didn't really share your mind and you suddenly start sharing your mind people listen mm -hmm, whereas mm -hmm. before they would have tuned it out so i suspect that you have a role in this upcoming era to be outspoken that your mm -hmm. fortune is to speak up and because we don't hear from you often we will probably listen mm -hmm. and take mm -hmm. it to heart whereas other people just let it go one through in one ear and out the mm -hmm. other you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do you do you feel a new grand i am statement building up is there a grand i am yeah. for you i i'm here <laughs> oh i am here <laughs> so, i am here so you were not here before huh yeah i don't feel like i was i, I was scared before uh, um yeah and now it's just yeah oh owning the space um mm. whatever size or shape it chooses to take um yeah because uh yeah definitely just being able to to take up space being able to be present interesting so actually taking up space is zero so it sounds like you're a little zero reluctant period mm. uh, you okay zero, zeroed yourself out and you need to zero yourself in i also have Z chiron at in taurus at zero wow right on hitler's birthday so okay. <laughs> that would mean that you fail to claim your worth yeah that you fail to protect and claim your worth with yourself yeah. and that might be because those are semi-sextiled, mm -hmm. uh, your Chiron at zero Taurus and your Jupiter at zero Gemini, it mm -hmm. means that they are connected. Mm -hmm. So that means mm -hmm. that not speaking up leads to not feeling worthy. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. feeling worthy keeps you from speaking up. Okay. okay. They both play off of each other. So the key there is the zero. Yeah. What will make you feel safe? 
when you speak up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. will make you feel safe to claim what you're worth. Mm -hmm. you know, I can claim what I'm worth if I don't act like I'm all that, or I can claim what I'm worth if, um, if, if I have evidence of it. These are just, mm -hmm. these, are, these are the boundaries. Right. So what's right. missing for your voice and your self-worth is that the boundaries are not clear. And as soon as they're clear, you're gonna be able to own what you're worth. You're gonna be able to own what you have to say. This is very interesting because I that's what I feel like right now is the boundaries. I've been making them more clear. Um, I'm yeah. currently making a website. I'm currently, okay, this is what I know I can give. This is what I know I can say. Um, wow, yeah. And very, rec uh, recognize that one boundary, there's space and time of the two boundaries. Mm -hmm. So just keep in mind that time also counts. Mm -hmm. So you could say, I'm not ready to say this now, but I'll say this later. And mm -hmm, or, or I'll mm -hmm. say this okay. when this happens, or I'll say this when I find out this. Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. having that boundary in place will build courage and strength and the ability to sort of sit up straight in your chair mm -hmm. because you've, do, you've created limits now. Yeah. And you can always yes. move them, Yes. But, but operating without them is paralyzing. Mm -hmm. Mm, okay yeah. okay and that's the secret to everyone that's also the secret to wealth for you so for you to mm. make become abundant you want to be very clear on what you will or won't do okay yeah mm. okay okay and can i ask one other question because yes. while Mr. i'm looking May. at my yeah. chart here that's i'm great. noticing that there's i have two other signs in 11 degrees two, which are the planets be, Yes, but sorry, planets. Uh, Pluto in Libra, 11. Ooh. Neptune Ooh. in Sag. 11. Does Pluto conjunct your sun? Uh, your, sun and Pluto can... to, are your sun and Pluto right next to each other? Uh, let's see. Yes. Yes. Okay, so your sun conjuncts zero. Mm. Pluto is zero. Oh. So your whole life is about the zeros. Your whole life. <laughs> Where you start <laughs> and stop. That's why I am here because you were there before. It feels like a Dr. Seuss oh, book. I am okay. here, I am there. So yeah, so that boundaries are everything for you. It's your whole life. Your whole life is an experiment of where to draw the boundary okay. and where to see the boundary. So your father crossed a boundary, for instance, in the way he was. Um, you spoke up for your boundaries by speaking up. Everything yeah. in your life is really where do I, how far does the light go? Where does it mm -hmm. stop? Mm -hmm. And where does it begin, right? And building mm -hmm. safety. Mm -hmm. That's yes. why you're afraid. The fear is the lack of boundary. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So yeah. most of the fear you have is that you didn't put limits on it. So it's like, it's yeah. like I, yeah. if there's no fence up, the baby can walk right over the cliff. Mm -hmm. If there's mm -hmm. no clear fence, if there's no do not pass here, Mm. then you could go too far easily or not far enough yeah. to get the job done. So you have to, so your whole life is where does it start? Where does it end? Those are the two questions. When mm. and where does it start? When and where does it end? And I think if you can answer that question for everything, you're going to feel yeah. really strong and you're going to be pronounced in what you do and your self-worth is going to just shoot up to the roof. You're mm -hmm. going to be amazed at how confident you feel by being clear on what you won't do. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 wow i feel that wow. one <laughs> like, Yay. Yeah. i'm proud of you where's the other wow. 11 you said pluto was one what was the other uh the other one was uh, neptune and sag Ooh. okay that's interesting so that's actually a little bit different that is that you you psychically download uh health information <laughs> so you yeah you've been you basically know what's integrity and what's not an integrity. Okay. So I could say, here's a World Bank. Are they in integrity? You're psychically, you know, no, they're cheating somewhere. If yeah. a body is out of integrity, like it doesn't have enough minerals, you psychically know, oh, there's something missing. The body's not in integrity. So yeah. you sort of have a Mary Poppins psychic awareness so you can just feel when something is off. Yes. And so I think one of the key <laughs> things there is to separate, um, you know, that's no reflection on you. <laughs> so again, you have to make, you have to make real clear, the clear, the clearer you are with your boundaries with yourself, that you, where you stop and mm -hmm. the rest of the world begins, mm -hmm. the sharper your psychic ability will be. Yes. So okay. your psychic ability is, you know, as sharp as your boundaries. Basically you have to make sure you know what you are not. And then mm -hmm. everything else is your psychic awareness. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So right. it's like, 
so for instance, like, okay, this person's having integrity issues with their health. Okay, I've had integrity issues with my health. Am I picking up on me? No, I'm I'm good. Okay, boom. Then I know for sure they're having mm-hmm, integrity mm-hmm. issues with their health. Mm-hmm. So there'll be moments where um, you have to take yourself out of the equation, if that makes sense. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah, I yeah. kind of, I think, stumbled up, across, uh, upon that somehow. Um, and I, yeah. I usually say that I have a, a meter that kind of goes goes wild when something is or isn't, um, something especially with something's food. out of place. Yeah, yeah totally. And I can just rising, like see it. Uh huh. Your sixteen degree rising makes you very psychic when you're in front of people too. So you're more psychic in front of people than you are across the way. Just so you know. And the last point I want to give to you is with Pluto and Aquarius. You're going to be rising in vibration. That's why I asked what you do. You're mm-hmm. going to be actually, you're, mo- you're going to be ascending for the next 24 years. So what that means is you're going to start to feel higher frequencies, maybe see auras, maybe be able to go through space I started time. seeing auras. Okay. Without awesome. even and trying. Yes, you're not going to have to, to try. You've oh. actually already been in a past life uh, at the wizard ascended level. And so you, you ended up crashing with the earth. So you have memories of all those supernatural powers that humans have and so you just want to make sure you know be clear in your boundaries that yes my heart wants to see this yes my heart is interested in knowing more you know and again what makes me safe okay i'll see auras but i don't want to see dead people so again Mm -hmm. the more you define the boundaries the sharper the power will be okay okay and you can always move the boundaries you can say okay i want to see it but i don't want to see dead people okay Mm -hmm. you know just be clear on where the line is Mm -hmm, mm-hmm mm-hmm and is that um i'm just curious is that kind of related to like the scorpio north node Wait, um, is that connected what there degrees your scorpio north, north node there three degrees scorpio um that means that in particular you have to protect believing in yourself and the and put boundaries around believing in yourself oh, okay so three is okay. believe in yourself scorpio is protect believing in yourself so that means don't oh, let your father God. interfere with believing in yourself. Don't let someone saying you're full of BS. Don't let your own mind go, this is crazy. Don't let your own feelings get in the way of believing in yourself. Don't let anything get in the way of believing in yourself. If you believe it, lock it up, put it in the vault, and don't look back. Thank you. I needed to hear that. Good. <laughs> that was Good. the thing I was waiting to hear. I, I didn't know that that's what it was, but wow. That's what it is. Thank you. So, wow. It was a pleasure to meet you. I yes. have to transition because I don't want to squat on the next Human Garage show. Absolutely. But it was a, it was a pleasure to meet you. Can I stop by in Turkey if I'm ever in Absolutely. I'd love to say hi. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, okay. definitely. Wonderful. All, All right. right. Well, be well. Enjoy the eclipse. You I too. am here. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Ciao for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was great, everyone. And this was a great show. Thanks, everyone, for being patient with me in the top of the show. Something went wrong with the internet. I'll just tell you right now, expect internet to be wonky, really, for the next mm, five days or so. We have Mercury retrograde, as I like to say, Mercury retrograde on April 1st. Remember, if you do want to be a part of our community, it's serious joy. You can find out by going to the Human Garage website, click Partners, and then click Products, Human uh, Serious Joy is one of the products uh, that is sponsored by Human Garage. Also, be sure to check out Gary and I in Austin, Texas. We'll be together on stage on the 12th and again on stage on the 18th together in Austin, Texas. His tickets are on his website. My tickets are on unitethelight.love. Until next Monday when I do an Astro Day with Gary, much love to you all. Be good. Stay in your hearts. Stay free. I'll see you soon. Ciao. Thank you.